Ada for telling my wife it's her fault she wasn't invited to my sister's wedding? I should have known better than to tell my wife, Lisa, that it was her fault she wasn't invited to my sister's wedding. If I had a dollar for every time I'd heard, I can't believe you said that, from Lisa, I could have bought my sister a fancy wedding gift. Instead, I found myself on the couch that night, trying to convince myself that saying the wrong thing was better than saying nothing at all. It all started weeks before the wedding, in a flurry of phone calls and frantic emails. My sister, Emily, was tying the knot with her college sweetheart, and naturally, it became the center of our family's universe. The wedding was a picturesque affair, complete with pastel decorations, a three-tiered cake, and even a surprise dance number choreographed by Emily's bridesmaids. To everyone's shock and delight, I had been bestowed the honor of being the best man. But all I could think about was how to break the news to Lisa. From the moment I picked up the phone and dialed our home number, I felt the pit in my stomach grow larger. I knew this conversation would be delicate. Hey, babe, I said, trying to muster up some enthusiasm. Guess what? Emily's wedding is coming up. That's great. Lisa exclaimed, but I could hear the hesitation in her voice. When is it? And where? Next month, in the park near their campus. She paused for a second, and I knew she was bracing herself for the part one was dreading. And, am I invited? It was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. My mind raced, backtracking through the countless family gatherings where Lisa had gotten into a heated discussion about politics or her thoughts on gluten-free diets. I hesitated, and that hesitation felt like a confession. Um, well, you see, Emily didn't really want any plus ones since it's a small wedding. The silence was deafening. I mean, I'm sure she was just being cautious, you know? I rushed to add. With everything going on, she wanted to keep it intimate. Intimate, huh? So no room for me? Lisa's voice quivered, like a bubble on the verge of bursting. I could already feel the tension in the air thickening. Well, you and Emily haven't exactly seen eye to eye lately, have you? Did she tell you that? Lisa's tone switched from hurt to defensive, and I knew I had to tread carefully. No, but you've always had different views on, well, everything. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing it just makes family events, complicated. Her eyes narrowed, and I could see the gears turning in her mind, framing my words into a real argument. So you're saying it's my fault that I'm not invited? Really? That's the conclusion you've come to? I didn't mean it that way. I exclaimed, realizing I was in way over my head. I just think if you two talked more, maybe she'd feel differently. Talked more? You mean like how you just talked your way into being best man while I'm stuck home alone? I cringed, feeling my palms sweat as I tried to justify my situation. You know it's not like that. I thought it was a pretty big deal. I didn't think she'd actually want you there. I thought you wouldn't want to be there. My foot shot straight into my mouth. Lisa's brows furrowed and I realized I was in deep trouble. It was a classic case of the more I spoke, the worse it got. I can't believe you would put it all on me. It's like I'm being punished for being myself. No wonder she doesn't want me there. As she stormed off to the bedroom, I leaned back in my chair, wrestling with my guilt and the absurdity of the situation. I wanted to bang my head against the wall and just scream. Instead, I took a moment to gather my thoughts, which only seemed to make me more frustrated. We had been together for nearly five years, and during that time, I had become accustomed to navigating the tumultuous waters of family dynamics. Lisa had always been the fiery, independent type, and I admired that about her. However, it also meant that family gatherings often turned into theatrical productions, complete with awkward conversations and side-eye glances. The next morning, the tension lingered like a cloud hanging over our breakfast table. I could sense Lisa's resentment as she poured herself a bowl of cereal, the crunching sound cutting through the silence like a knife. Are we going to talk about it? I finally ventured. Talk about what? She replied, feigning innocence. The wedding. You know we can't avoid it. I'm not avoiding anything I'm just enjoying my cereal. I sighed, running my fingers through my hair in frustration. Lisa, this isn't about the wedding it's about us. I didn't mean to hurt you. I think you meant it. You always end up putting the blame on me for family issues. You're making it sound so much worse than it is. I'm just trying to understand why you two haven't been close. Oh, so it's my fault, then? Just like last Thanksgiving when I accidentally burned the turkey? Accidentally? You tried to deep fry it in a pan that was too small. That was one time. She snapped. And just like that, we spiraled into a comical debate about the merits of cooking disasters, both of us trading barbs about holiday catastrophes. By the end of it, I was left in stitches, despite the underlying frustration. After a particularly heated exchange involving the infamous green bean casserole incident, we both dissolved into laughter, the tension momentarily forgotten. 
But soon enough, the reality of the wedding crept back into our minds, and I could see Lisa's mood shift again. I can't believe I'm not going to be there, she said softly, her eyes distant. It just feels wrong. I could see the hurt behind her frustration, and it made my heart ache. I really wish you could come. Your family, too. I thought family meant all of us together, not just the ones who are easy to get along with. I was silent, and for a moment, the weight of her words hung between us like an unwelcome guest. A week later, as I stood nervously in front of the mirror adjusting my tie, I felt a mix of excitement and anxiety. I was thrilled to celebrate Emily's wedding, but the absence of Lisa felt like a shadow hanging over the day. I tried to convince myself it was for the best, but guilt nodded me. At the ceremony, I watched as Emily walked down the aisle, glowing and radiant, and a pang of longing struck my chest. I wanted Lisa to be there, sharing in the moment, laughing at the cute kids running around, or rolling her eyes at my brother's terrible dance moves. I missed her more than I wanted to admit. During the reception, I found myself surrounded by family, engaging in small talk with relatives I barely recognized. I felt like a balloon floating in a sea of chatter, desperately searching for something to hold onto. Every time I laughed or clinked glasses, I glanced at the empty seat beside me, wondering what Lisa would have said, how she would have lightened the mood with her signature humor. Hey, best man. My brother, Mike, nudged me. You're supposed to give a speech. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. I cleared my throat, ready to speak, but all I could think about was Lisa. As I stood before the crowd, I took a deep breath, trying to channel the charisma I'd seen in countless wedding speeches before. Well, I'm honored to be here today. Emily, you look amazing, and Ryan, you're lucky to have her. The room erupted into applause, and I felt the warmth wash over me. Now, I've known Emily for quite a while, and she's always been, well, let's just say a little fiery. Laughter rippled through the crowd, and I grinned, thinking of Lisa's own fierce spirit. But it's that same passion that makes her so special. She brings everyone together, even when things get a little heated. I mean, who can forget the time she almost made us all cry at Thanksgiving with her tearful speech about gratitude? And let's not even talk about the cooking accidents. The laughter swelled again, but suddenly, I was struck by a wave of longing. I thought about how Lisa's humor was a counterpoint to Emily's fire, how together they could light up any room. I wish my wife could be here today, I admitted, my voice softer. Because she truly understands the value of family. The crowd quieted, and I felt the weight of my words. Emily, I know you and Lisa don't always see eye to eye, but family is about love and acceptance, even in the messy moments. And I hope one day, you two can find a way to connect. The room was still, and I glanced around, noticing a few nodding heads and raised eyebrows. It felt vulnerable, yet freeing to acknowledge the truth. So let's raise our glasses to family no matter how complicated it can get. As the clinking echoed through the room, I spotted my sister beaming, and my heart swelled with pride. When I returned home that night, the house felt empty. I missed Lisa's laughter, her sarcastic comments about my speech, and the way she would have rolled her eyes at the whole wedding affair. Instead, I found her curled up on the couch, half watching a rom-com that didn't hold her interest. Hey, I said softly. I'm home. She turned, her eyes sparkling with an emotion I couldn't quite decipher. How was it? Good, I think. I kind of, uh, mentioned you in my speech. Really? She raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Yeah, I told everyone how much I wished you were there. Her expression softened, and I saw a flicker of understanding. That's sweet, but you know I'm still upset. I know, I replied, taking a seat beside her. But I want to work through this. You're family too, and I never meant to hurt you. I just thought maybe if we could all get along, it would make things easier. She sighed, leaning back against the couch. But at what cost? I shouldn't have to change who I am for family gatherings. I nodded, feeling the weight of her words. You're right, and I should have defended you more. It's just that, family dynamics can be tricky, and sometimes I don't know how to navigate them. I get that, she said, glancing at me with a faint smile. But I don't want to be an outsider. I want to be part of your family without feeling like I'm the black sheep. I don't want that either, I said earnestly. I want us to support each other, even when it's hard. Because, at the end of the day, we're a team, right? Lisa chuckled softly. A dysfunctional team, but a team nonetheless. I smiled, relieved that the tension between us was slowly dissolving. As the days turned into weeks, I made a conscious effort to encourage Lisa to reach out to Emily. They exchanged a few awkward texts, and the conversation slowly began to thaw. Eventually, they agreed to meet up for coffee a small step but a significant one. That day arrived, and I waited anxiously at home, hoping it would go well. I had to trust Lisa and Emily could find common ground. When Lisa returned, she looked different lighter, almost liberated. We talked. 
she said, practically glowing, and it wasn't nearly as painful as I thought it would be. Really? That's amazing. I even apologized for the way I handled things at Thanksgiving, my eyes widened in surprise. Wow. That's big of you. I mean, I was a bit of a tyrant, wasn't I? Only a little. We both laughed, and I couldn't help but feel a wave of relief wash over me. I knew we still had work to do, but this was progress. As the weeks passed, Lisa and Emily began to develop their own rapport, and our family dynamics gradually shifted. We attended birthdays and holidays together, and slowly, I began to notice a subtle change. One sunny Saturday afternoon, I found myself hosting a small barbecue in our backyard, complete with burgers, hot dogs, and Lisa's famous potato salad. Emily and Ryan came over, and for the first time, the air felt light and carefree. As we gathered around the table, I watched Emily and Lisa engage in lively conversation, laughter bubbling up like a refreshing summer drink. It was beautiful to see them connect, and I couldn't help but feel proud of what we had achieved together. When the day came to a close, I was filled with a sense of satisfaction, not just for the food we'd enjoyed but for the journey we'd all taken. As I cleaned up, Lisa wrapped her arms around me from behind, resting her chin on my shoulder. You know, it feels good to be able to share these moments with you and your family. I smiled, turning to face her. It really does. I'm proud of us for working through everything. Yeah, but let's not make a habit of you saying it's my fault for everything, she teased, her eyes sparkling. Oh, trust me. I've learned my lesson, I said, chuckling. As I looked into her eyes, I realized just how much we had grown together. Love was complex and messy, often requiring us to face uncomfortable truths, but in those moments, we discovered more about ourselves and each other. And as the sun set on that perfect day, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude not just for family but for the love and laughter that filled our lives, the kind that could weather any storm. It wasn't always easy, but the journey was worth it, and I knew that we were stronger together than we had ever been apart. In the end, I had to laugh at my initial blunder. Sometimes love means stumbling and finding our way through the chaos, with humor as our guide and understanding as our anchor.